Tonight, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Numbers. We are in the Torah portion, which is called Nassau. Basically, it means to be lifted up. And uh, we have to be counted and be lifted up. Amen. To be accountable. Yes. And let me give you a setup of this message tonight so you know what we're about. But if you have if the book of Numbers, chapter 4, and verse 21, we're going to read uh, from Zechariah also, and Acts, chapter 21. If you look at this word, let's go to Nas, let's go to Numbers first, and let's look at the, read the scripture in chapter four. We welcome all of you here today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You are in the right place. <laughs> yeah. All right. Numbers chapter four, verse twenty-one. And the Lord said to Moses, "Record the names of the members of the clans and families of." The Yishinite division of the tribe of Levi lists all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. These Yishinite clans will be responsible for general service and carrying loads. They must carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tabernacle itself, with its coverings, the outer coverings, and the fine goatskin leather and the curtain for the tabernacle entrance. They are also to carry the curtain uh, for the courtyard walls that surrounds the tabernacle and the altar. The curtain around, uh, I should say, across the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all the equipment related to the use. The Gershonites are responsible for all these items. Aaron and his sons will direct the Gershonites uh, regarding all their Duties, whether it involves moving equipment or doing other work, they must assign the Gershon are responsible for the goals they are to carry. So these are the duties assigned to the Gershon I clan as the tabernacles that will be directly to responsible for the Ishmael son of Aaron, the priest. Now, let's let's make sense of this. You say, well, is that what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to carry all this stuff inside <laughs> the sanctuary? Well, you know, you have enough carrying yourself in the sanctuary, amen? amen. <laughs> and that's the first part you have to re remember. Now, this Torah portion of Nassau, uh, which means count, will be accounted for, relates to, actually, there's a law in the Torah portion. It's called the Law of Solta. I wonder if you ever heard of this person. The law of Sota. Now, who is this person? First of all, you might want to write this down. The woman, Sota, was suspected of adultery. In other words, what God is warning us and, and calling us to do. is that Israel 
And I believe we could all attest to this, even in today's world, that when I say Israel, I, I don't mean the land of Israel, I mean the people of Israel. Amen. And, and when I say the people of Israel, that means all of us. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 I mean it's the church. Yeah. Everybody say amen. Because if you look at the Bible, the Bible doesn't refer to you as Presbyterians, Catholics, right? Amen. Pentecostals, no. It refers to you as Israel. Amen. Right? Amen. If you look at, you know, even uh, Deuteronomy and Mark, it says, Heal Israel. What do you mean, Heal Israel? So people kind of relate, well, that's, that's for them over there, not for us. No, it isn't. It's for us. Yeah. So somebody say it's for us. Yeah. Okay? So what God is calling us, and we, and we have to understand that, the, how many of you know the world today has gone into an adulterous format? Amen. Right? Has gone into an adulterous format. Uh, we have sold ourselves out in so many different ways. Yes. And if you look at the world today, you know, I was talking to somebody today, he said, man, the world is really going crazy, isn't it? In the latter days, more and more. I mean, with all the killings and everything that's going on, and targeting, and the, you know, the people that got targeted in, in, uh, in Orlando, uh, you know, it's just, it's mind-boggling what, you know, what, what people are, are, are trying to do and accomplish, but how many of you know God is not pleased with anything that's out of his word? Amen. 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 Everybody say amen. amen. So, uh, if you look at this, uh, let's look at this law of Sota. Let's go to chapter 5. Okay. And the law that we're talking about is that in verse 11, and also we're going to jump up a little bit to, to verse 1. Let's go to verse 1 first of all. It's called the purity of the camp. Now, how many of you know that when he refers to the camp, it's referring to our hearts also? Amen. In other words, our surroundings, who we really are. Yes. How many of you know that you know God is looking at that, correct? Right. Amen. Okay. So the Lord gave these instructions to Moses, command the people of Israel to remove from the camp anyone who has a skin disease or uh, a, a discharge, right? Or who has become ceremonially unclean by touching the dead person. You know, you say, well, most people are going to go around touching dead people. But how many of you know when a person is not walking with God, they're actually dead? Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right? So we shouldn't be, you know, associating ourselves with things that are dead to God, right? Right. Amen? amen. That's what he's referring to. This command applies to men and women alike, remove them, so they will, again, not defile the camp in which I live among them. And God lives among us, but he doesn't want to live in a house or a place where it's being defiled. Correct? Amen. Amen. Very simple. Okay? Now, if you go to verse 11, and the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Suppose a man's wife goes astray and she's unfaithful. Now remember, God is using this as, a, as, a, as, a, as an analogy of, of a woman going astray. Now, we are referred to as what? The bride. The bride, right? And how many of you would agree that we have gone astray? Amen. But this is what we're referring to. The wife has gone astray. And and faith and I'm faithful to what a husband who was a husband Yeshua Yeshua our Messiah he's our he's our groom correct Amen all right so we have become unfaithful Amen all right and she has defiled herself even though there were no witnesses uh, that she was not caught in the act and so you know how many of you know that we all you know do things and even though we're not caught we're still doing things that are not right right okay. So if the husband, in verse 14, if the husband becomes uh, jealous and is suspicious of his wife, and she needs to know whether or not she has to follow herself, the husband must bring his wife to the what? The priest. And of course, you know, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the priest, the Yeshua himself. He must also bring an offering of two quarts of barley, flour to be presented on her behalf. Do not mix with olive oil and frankincense and all that stuff. Now, 
again, you know, even it is, it's called a, a sin offering. Uh, you know, we, we sin, come to the Lord, and bring not only our repentance, but also a, a sin offering. Now, let's look at this again in, the, in, 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 in a better picture. Now, again, here a woman is expected of adultery and is, is to be brought to a husband, to the priest, uh, who then presents her before who? God, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, Israel, now if you look at Numbers chapter 5, Israel has made vows to, in other words, new husbands. What do you mean new husbands? In other words, we have been prostituting ourselves after the gods of other nations. Every time you go after things that are not of God, you're basically prostituting yourself. Everybody say, Amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. But Yahweh, again, come on, this is this is me. But Yahweh, again, God has heard her vows and again heard them violate those vows. Now, if you if, if you go to the half Torah of this of this whole portion in Judges chapter thirteen, let's go to Judges chapter thirteen. We'll see. We're gonna now we're gonna jump a little bit because everything is cross reference in Judges chapter 13. See, every time you read the Bible, and when I say Torah, I mean from Genesis to Revelation. Just don't read the first five books. You never read the Torah by itself anyway, correct? Yeah. When you read the Word, the Word should be corresponding and cross-reference to other verses. And everything correlates together. So, in Judges chapter 13, and starting in the second verse, and in those days, a man married Manoah from the town of Dan, lived in the town of Zorah, and his wife was unable to become pregnant, and they had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give son, I mean, birth to a son. So be careful, you must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, nor eat any, uh, 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 I'm sorry, forbidden food. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite. Who's he talking about? Samson. Samson. From birth, he will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. Okay? And you know the Philistines are a reference also to the Palestinians Amen. in Israel. Okay? So we, now Samson grows to become, what? A mighty judge. Yes. Okay? Who brings Israel a measure of wrath from who? The Philistines. Now, the land of the Philistines and the area where? Where, where's the, where do you think is that land today? Gaza. Gaza. That's Gaza today in Israel. All right? Then you go to, judge, then you go to, to, the, to the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah. Let's go to John. John chapter 12. All right, just to cross reference this. I'm going to do a couple of more cross referencing. Okay. Go to John chapter 12. Let me go to, again, verse 16. And this is about, if you understand this, this chapter, uh, and if you, do, if you go into the beginning, let's go to the beginning first, and then we'll go to chapter six, uh, verse 16. He says, six days before the Passover celebration began, Yeshua arrived at uh, Bethany, at the home of Lazarus, the man, he had raised from the dead, and a dinner was prepared in Yeshua's name to honor uh, to honor him. And Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate and with him. And then Mary took a twelve-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and he anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his uh, feet with hair. And the house was filled with her fragrance. 
So again, a reference to, again, a woman who's even though, uh, you know, and, and how many of you know there's also a reference to this uh, adulterous woman also, right? Remember that? Uh, that again was a reference to again women again women were not supposed to also be in the household together with the priest but here again God is allowing this to happen but Judas of Escarath the disciple who soon betrayed him uh, the person was in other words right away he's money hungry right and uh, he said well this thing is worth a lot of money and uh, you know the oil that was actually presented to the Messiah was worth a year's worth of salary that's how much that's why he made such a big stink about it. He said, we, we should take this, sell, sell it, and, and get the money and, and give it to the poor. But of course, Yeshua said, well, you know, the poor you'll always have with you. Amen, but I'm not going to be here very long, so let's concentrate on what I'm doing. That's what he was doing. So he says, leave him alone, let's go on. And then in verse 12, the next day, the news that Yeshua was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. And then again, uh, a large crowd for Passover took place. Now, in verse 16, let's go there real quickly. His disciples didn't understand at the time uh, this was a fulfillment of prophecy, but Yeshua entered his glory and then remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Now, the reason I want to stop there real quickly is because, again, you can understand the story here in, in, in John chapter 12. But let me, let, me, let, let me make real quick note of this. Say Yeshua died. Yeshua died for us, right? Okay. So what is it God is asking us to do? Okay, in John chapter twelve, and we want to write this down. Believers have to die to self. God always uses us. He uses Himself as an example of His death and resurrection, but we have to die to self, right? Amen. And when you die to self. We are spiritually elevated to the heavenly throne, and we are assigned to Yeshua as his high priest, or again in the order of Melchizedek. Correct? Amen. Okay, now, so let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this again. I'm going to give you some Hebrew words, and I'm going to go back to this a little bit. I want you to write down, first of all, with me, the word belly. Belly, like your belly. B E L L Y. Give you some Hebrew words. Why is this so important? Because this Torah portion is about standing up to be gathered, to give life, to be transformed, to get up and become a life, a giving force of who? Yeshua, O oh God. Amen. Correct? Okay? That's what this whole Torah portion is about. Now, read the word belly, and the word here in Hebrew is actually the word beten. Beten. Now, why am I give you this word? Because this, this, all these words are basically found in the readings of the message that we're going to give tonight. All right, now, beten uh, basically means a belly, a womb, a womb, in other words, a body. And it means to become or completely empty. How many of you know we have to die? In other words, when you die to self, we should empty ourselves of all the Come on, all the junk that we have yeah. accumulated in life. Yeah. Everybody say amen. Amen. Okay? All right? So in Scripture, the belly is used for also the heart. The heart. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right? Let's go to Proverbs 18. And watch this. Proverbs gives us a little insight. There's so much to the Word of God. I mean, this you could... Especially when you study this, it gets more and more profound. Proverbs 18, and verse 8. Let's look at this. Proverbs 18, verse 8.
Rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's belly or heart. Everybody say belly, belly. or heart. heart. Come on. And how, how many of you know that, you know, even when, when God uses the reference about uh, the armor, and the armor of God is not about a Roman soldier, you know that, right? There's the belt of truth. What's the belt surrounding? Where, where the, what are you tied up? In your belly. Right? Why? The belt of truth. Right? So you should have a conviction of truth in your belly. In your spirit. Come on, everybody say my belly. How many of you know sometimes you could think of here, right? And reason, and all of a sudden get a conviction here. In your heart. In your belly. So again, the word belly, again, is the word bed, which you mean also is used for the heart. Now, if you go to Proverbs 20, 30, it also gives you another reference. Physical punishment cleanses away evil. Such discipline purifies what? Oh. The heart, the belly. Okay? All right? Uh, let's go to John chapter 7. Watch this. John chapter 7. And look at verse 38. Anyone who believes in me come and drink for the scripture declares rivers of living water will come from where his heart or belly right okay from his heart right how many of you should have flowing rivers of life flowing from a heart not that water have you ever been around that water have you ever seen still that water it stinks, doesn't it? That doesn't want us to stink. If I say amen. All right? In other words, carnal lust, sensual pleasures, all these things will create us to stink. <laughs> Let's go to Romans 16. Romans 16. Verse 18. Okay? So when you're getting into the cardinal flesh, is that such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interest by smooth talk. Hello. Mm -hmm. And glowing words. And they deceive innocent people. Sounds like politics. Amen. Politicians have a tendency of doing that, don't they? Yes. They give you a lot of smooth words and they never fulfill what they say they're going to do. Right? And also, how many of you know there is, it happens also in the body of Christ too, right? Amen. Okay? All right. Now let's go to Philippians 3. I give you a lot of scripture, so we give you reference. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. They are headed for destruction. Their God is. Come on, watch this now. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things. And they think only about this life here on earth. Come on. Amen. Say amen. Is that going on today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. All right? But you look at verse 20. But he said, but we are citizens of heaven. When the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return, there's our Savior. How many of you are eagerly 
waiting for his return. Amen. Amen. I can't wait. Amen. Now, if you go to Titus, Titus chapter 1. All right? Try to show off your cell phone when you're in the church, please. Oh. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> Let's look at this tonight. How many of you have Titus? Amen. Somebody, somebody read that for me. Because I, I'm always reading. Sometimes I have to read about Titus chapter 1, verse 12. Somebody read that. Let's read that one more time. I love that. We can read it one more time. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Yeah, give, give, give her the mic so we could, we should always have a mic there. Okay. Check, check. All right. Read that one more time so everybody can hear it now. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Mm -mm -mm. Is that going on? Yes. All right. <laughs> Even one of their own men, a prophet, in other words, that's going on too much. Too much of that is going on. Everybody say amen. amen. All right. So now we look at what belly is representing. Okay. And you find that in Strong's number 990. All right, now, if you go to the word, write the word dwell. The word dwell in Hebrew is the word shakan. It's almost like the word shakan. Okay. Shakan or shakan. And we could use it either with E. Sometimes it's more pronounced easier with A. Shakan. It means to abide. It means tabernacle. In other words, tabernacle with me. How many of you are the tabernacle of the living Amen. Holy Spirit? Amen. Right? Reside. It also means to reside in the presence of God. This is what this book of Numbers is telling us to do. Okay? Amen. In other words, concentrate on what your belly is telling you. Not hunger pains, but I mean the spirit. Right? Dwell as a tabernacle. Reside in the presence of God. Or to be indwelt by God. To be indwelt. God is looking for a well, we're, we're a house. We're a bait, right? Yes. The word bait means house in Hebrew. So God is looking for a house to dwell in. Right? Everybody say amen. Amen. Okay. In other words, to cause to dwell. This is the word shekhan. Now write the word blessings. Now, believe it or not, the word blessings is also, watch. Barak. <laughs> really? It's a Hebrew word. The word Baruch, blessing. So the word Barak is supposed to be a blessing. Amen. In other words, it means to kneel, to bless oneself. Baruch. The word also is Barak. 
No comment on Barack yet. We're taping. All right, keep. Right, the word keep. To keep. The word keep in Hebrew is the word shama. S-H-A-M-A-R. All right? It means to guard. So think about it. So, so, so think about it. Numbers count, be accounted for. This is all found in this Torah reading. All of this. All these meanings of word. So you can put it all together. Okay? All right? So it means also to observe the Sabbath. To give heed, to watch. It also means watchman. Watchman on a wall, to watch, to observe. In other words, the word keep. Now write the word jealousy. Make some room. And the word jealousy is the word quinan. Q U I N A H. Quinan. Which means zeal. It means. Uh, Also, the disposition of husband. How many of you know? Uh, also means of anger. Anger also to God. It means also adultery. Or idolatry. In other words, jealousy is a separation of one's life. That's why, that's why we shouldn't be jealous of each other. Amen. Amen? Because you're actually separating yourself. Right door, remember we talked about Samson, Nazarite. Now the word Nazarite is the word, uh, I'm right up here, Nazir, N-A-Z-I-R, Nazir. Okay? And now this word is also means to, cons to be consecrated, to be separated. A devoted one. When you say I'm a Nazarite, I'm devoted. A devoter. It also means untrimmed. That's why he did cut his hair. Untrimmed. An untrimmed vine. An untrimmed vine is an Azir or a Nazarite. In other words, when you are, say, I'm a priest. Priest. Come on, we're all priests, right? Amen. We're, we're all, all real priesthood, right? Amen. A priest, now why are we called priests? Because we're supposed to be separate to him. Amen. Amen. Separate to him. That's what a priest is, separate to him. Amen. I'm not a priest to anything else but to him. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Okay? All right. So let's now, let's, let's look at this. Go back to Proverbs 13. And let's look at this now. That was my introduction. <laughs> the title of my message tonight is The Adulterous Bride. 
or actually testing the adulterous bride. Okay, Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs again. And chapter 13. Now watch this now. This is where we're going to be tested more than anything else. It says, those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. And how many of you know some people can ruin their mouth and ruin just about everything? Amen. Amen. Right? All right. Now, in other words, okay, this is, so what is, what, is, what is the lesson? Write this down. Any man who controls his mouth and I'll say any man or woman who controls his or her mouth is protecting his or her life. Amen. Is protecting his or her own life, I should say. Now, this, this Torah portion, when I say Torah portion, I mean the reading that we're doing today. It is specifically talking about also, write this down, elevating people. If the word Nassau means to count, and also the word Nassau is, is, is also used as the word Natha to be lifted up. So it's also about elevating people. Now listen to me. When you elevate people, you're elevating God. Amen. When you're degrading people, you're degrading yourself and God. Yeah. Right? Okay? That's why we, you know, in the way the world is today, things that are happening in the world today, they use even religious formats to do what they said to do. And, you know, we're, and, and if you understand, that, you know, we've been studying about Islam for many years. You know, Islam is again, you know, I'm not saying that every Muslim, I mean, let me make sure, not every Muslim is a bad person. Right. Amen. I say amen. amen. I know a lot of good Muslims, good people. Radical Islam mm -hmm. is wrong. Yes. And today, and they're using Ramadan. Ramadan, believe it or not, has two different formats. Two, there's a certain belief in Islam that Ramadan is supposed to be loving, Giving, caring time, giving to the poor, doing good. There's another side, the radical Islam, that believes in, in Ramadan. That's why this person did it during Ramadan. I mean, if you understand, he did it on Shavuot. Mm -hmm. He did it on Pentecost. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many died? 50. What is 50? Shavuot, Pentecost. Mm -hmm. This is how the enemy tries to rob what God is trying to do. So he used that format or that platform to destroy. So what is, what is God saying? In the Bible, listen to me. One thing, one thing if you ever read this to a, a Muslim, in the Quran, nowhere does it say in the Quran to love one another. It doesn't say to love. This is, Muhammad never quotes to love your brother. You know that? You're not going to find it. So what, what, what is the opposite? God is saying, God is love. God is forgiving. God is about elevating. So we're supposed to be what? Elevating each other. Right? And that's what God calls his people his people. When we elevate each other. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right? So, say elevating people. All right. Now, when you elevate someone, you're elevating yourself and also elevating God. Correct? So in Proverbs 13, 3, when you read this, it says, those who control their tongue will have long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. <laughs> Amen? Now go to Proverbs 15 and verse 1. Look at this. Proverbs 15, verse 1. It says, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. 
right? So it's about, it's about controlling. Now, in other words, those who talk too much would eventually be destroyed. Right? Everybody say amen? All right, so this is called biblical law. All right, defiling oneself. In other words, okay, so in other words, also in Proverbs 15, right words, write this down, right words can turn an angry man into a friend. Amen. And wrong words can turn a friend into an enemy. Amen. Is that common sense? Yes. Right? If you notice, now, also in the Haftorah, when we, read, when we read in the book of John and also in the book of Judges, it's found in the book of Judges that you, you, you know the story of Samson, of Israel. Remember? He was a judge of Israel. Amen. Amen. And the lady that he was dealing with was who? Delilah. Delilah. Now, I want you to think about it for a second. Samson was one of the most powerful, strongest men in that time, correct? Amen. I mean, he was, he was uh, I guess, uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, Tony who else? There you go. <laughs> and uh, you know, think about it, all the big bad dudes that we have today. Roll into one. And a woman like Delilah basically put him to his knees. Correct? Yeah. Now, what, now, she didn't use, you know, heavy drink. Because that's why I didn't drink. So he didn't, she, she didn't drug him, right? Delilah actually used what? The right words. The right words. She said the right things. Now, the name Delilah, write this down, also means dainty one. So, right words, in other words, the point is, right words in this case can turn an enemy to a friend. Right? Yeah. Okay? All right, let's go to Proverbs 16. Let me give you another, another point, my next point that I want to share. In Proverbs 16, verse 23, From a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Everybody say amen? Amen. Okay? So, 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 so what, what, what am I referring to here? Right, the word wisdom. Hakma in Hebrew. The word wisdom is necessary in order to speak the right words. If you notice people that don't speak the right words, they don't have any wisdom. Come on. How many of you know people that just don't speak, they just don't keep on saying the wrong words? Amen. They may be trying to persuade something or try to say something, but it comes out always, you feel negative when you walk away. No wisdom. Now, why am I saying this? Because this is a law, a biblical law, right? This is not biblical law in Torah is wisdom. In other words, before you can speak right words to people, wisdom is a must. Wisdom is a must. Amen. Amen. Amen? All right. Next point. Write this down. The purpose of words is to educate, to cause enthusiasm, to energize or to lift or elevate those around you. All right? 
Proverbs 15. You're in Proverbs. Look at verse 7. The lips of the wise give good advice. The heart of a fool has gone, has none to give. Make sense? The lips of a wise give good advice. The heart of a fool has none to give. In other words, the key word here in Hebrew is what? Now, write this, now write, please write this key word down. Elevate. All right? Now, elevate in Hebrew also means um, let me try to write it correctly. Tala. Tala or tala? Strong's 8524 means to elevate. Tala. Or tala. Right? Final point, Proverbs 18. Well, not final point, but one of my final points. Proverbs 18, verse 8. If you read this, what it said, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Rumors. How many of you ever been, you know, uh, wounded or hurt by rumors? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Amen. Yeah. It hurts. All right? That's not what God is about. In other words, words, okay, write this down. Words or wrong words, I should say, wrong words create heart wounds that make trust impossible. Wrong words create heart wounds that make trust impossible. There's certain people that I have met, even in the body, I can never, I can never trust them. I forgive them for what they did because they don't know what they're doing. But I don't trust them because they have never been account. In other words, they have always used words that again will create wounds or again do more damage than good. Amen. So the key point in this Torah teaching is the words, write this down, either create conflict or eliminate conflict. So when we read the Torah portion about Nassau lifting up and, okay, be accounted for and talk, talk about an adulterous woman and all this stuff, well, you know, well, let's look at this. In other words, do not allow your words, okay, now write this down, do not allow your words to destroy you. Because your words can destroy you. Amen. Your words reveal, okay, now listen to me. I, I can tell a person's heart by the words they process. Amen. The words reveal what kind of heart you process. Like, I mean, you, you possess, I should say. The heart you possess will reveal what kind of words you say. The words will basically will expose you. What, what does it say? From abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right? Say from the abundance of the heart. Right? Okay, Luke chapter 6. Let's go to Luke. A few more minutes yet. Luke 6. Verse 45. 6.45. Okay? A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. 
what you say flows from what's in your heart. Everybody say amen. Amen. Okay? Yeshua is speaking, right? The Messiah himself. Think about it. If words create created the world in the beginning, in Genesis yeah. 1. The word, in other words, think about it. Words created your world. Amen. Right? If, if, if God created the world with the word, well then you, your words create your world. Amen. Amen? Amen? Now, can I ask you something? I, I always ask the question, what was the purpose of words? I come God they use sign languages. <laughs> Think about it. What, what was the purpose of words? But why did God use that format of words? Okay, write this down. Let me give you some Hebrew wisdom. Words link people. And God is about elevating and connecting to one another. So words can link to people. In other words, words are a bridge to people, but words are also a bridge to your future. But when your words are wrong, watch this now, you are also linked to wrong people. And wrong people, watch this now, will link you to a wrong future. Does that make sense? Amen. Right? Proverbs 18, let's go back to Proverbs. There's so much wisdom in Proverbs. I love Proverbs. Amen. You should read it every day. There's 31 problems in the in the Bible. It's 30, normally it's 31 days in the month. I guarantee you, if you read a, a proverb every day, you get a lot of wisdom. Yeah. All right? Proverbs 18, verse 21. It says, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequence. Hello? Amen. All right? In other words, there is a time to talk and a time to listen. Everybody say a time to talk. And a time to listen. Say a time for movement. And a time for staying still. Right? And Evelyn got up at the wrong time. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's the listen, I mean sometimes you gotta go, you gotta go, goodbye. It has to, has to do what it has to do, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta wait for that right moment. Now, how do I know? Okay, now, let me to me. How do I know what's coming out of your mouth? How do you know what's coming out of your mouth? You know how how I know what's coming out of your mouth? Of the people you link to. If you link to the wrong people, I know what you're talking is wrong. How many of you? Come on. I'm giving you wisdom. Amen. All right? About the people you're linked to. I don't have to wonder if somebody's talking about the rabbi. I know. I just watch the associations that people are linked with, and I know they're talking. Amen. Because if you are willing to risk your association with a spiritual leader who is supposed to be your mentor, then surely you don't have godly wisdom. Because if wisdom precedes wise counsel, and if you don't have no wisdom, then you are hanging around what? Unwise associations. Amen. Right? Amen. When someone approaches you about those unwise associations, you either, now think about it. I, I try to help people. You know what? Why are you hanging around with those people? They get offended. They actually get offended and get bitter. Because you're trying to speak into their life. It's not that I'm trying to be nosy. I'm trying to speak into your life. I'm not trying to you know, be nosy. Again, your words link yourself to people. Now, you may want to write this down. This is very good wisdom, and I'm going to be closing with this. You will never go above 
in your life, you will never go above in your life with unwise associations. You will always stay at a, at a platform where you will never be successful. Just hang around the wrong people. Amen. Come on. You, you, do you think someone, okay, let me just use, uh, you, you think wealthy people, someone like, let's say like, somebody like Trump. You think Trump hangs around on wives' associations? I don't think so. In, in, in other words, if you are around losers, now watch this now. Let's just say it like it is. If you are around a loser, if you are around rebellious people, if you are around gossipers, what happens? You become just like them. Right? And that's why we have sometimes these little parties that, that end up, you know, it happens every, it happens in your job. How many of you in your job, there's a little click? Oh, yeah. Right? There's a little click. They, and, they, and, you, and you can't penetrate that click. They're tight. <laughs> Right? And they gossip and they and, and they and they and they just they manipulate. And the reason you're not in there is because good, you're you are a wise person. You don't want to be around that. Amen. Just recognize it and pray for them. Right. Pray for them. That's all you can do. Right? Now, now why is this so important? Okay, now, why is this message so important? Write this down. Because a good name, write this down, a good name and a good reputation to Yahweh, to God, is very important. Amen. A good name and a good reputation to Yahweh, our God, is very important. Why? Why is it important? Because we represent Him. Because you carry His name. Amen. You know you carry His name? Amen. It's written in your hand. Amen. You know that? Your name, those lines in your hand actually spells the word yud hey vahe Everybody has it. And I, I already showed that to you. How many of you have seen your name written in your hand? Amen. God's name. Right? So you carry his name. That's why word, in other words, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew mindset or the Hebrew circles, it's not about it's not about the pastor. Because in the Hebrew circle, in any congregation that truly follows the Torah or the or the true word of God, you will never, ever, 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 ever find watch this a member of a congregation speak negative about their rabbi. That's right. Never. As a matter of fact, can I tell you something? Even in the Muslim world, if you if you in a mosque and you talk negative about the imam, they'll take you out and hang you and they do a jihad on you. <laughs> they do, and that's how that's how it should be. Don't you never entertain anything negative. Amen. It, that would never happen in, in a synagogue. It never happened. Because, because every true Hebrew knows that their rabbi is longing onto a Messiah. Long, then that's the messages that God has sent them. Amen. 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 Because talking or criticizing uh, your pastor or your rabbi is actually talking about him and Yeshua himself. That's right. Think about it. Now, and I understand in today's world that we may have some spiritual leaders that are not trustworthy. But you know what? If you know that they're not trustworthy, well, don't go there. Amen. Move on. Move on. But don't talk about it. Don't go there and say, you know what? Pray for them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Amen. Yeshua said it himself. Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. Amen. Right? Because your future, listen to me, I'll write this down. Your future, and I, I think some of you will testify to this, your future is linked to what I'm teaching you. Yes. So why in the world, 
In your right mind, when you talk about someone who's trying to speak into your life and try to guide you in the right way. All right? And this to me, this is not my rule. I didn't make up this rule. Well, all of a sudden I'm getting, I'm airing out my frustration. No, this is God's rule. I know people do this, and I see the ignorance of people doing this. This is called, write this down, biblical law. Yes. Biblical law. <laughs> Can I say something? You know, this is something that. I, I, I've noticed in in in, in, a, in, a, in a in a Hebrew mindset, in a, in a if you look at the Hebrew mindset of God, no one ever goes to a congregation to evaluate a rabbi to see if he's telling the truth or not. Hmm. That's not that's not you know. If that person is telling a lie, I would judge him. Amen. You should go there. And sometimes listen to me. How many of you have heard certain messages and you don't agree with anything they say? Right. Just pray for them. Amen. Oh, I, I do this. Eat the meat, throw away the bones. Amen. Take the good stuff out of it, and the, the rest of it just, you know, I'm not going to entertain that. Amen? Amen. Okay? But you got to be careful. Very, very careful. Yes, there are false prophets among us. Absolutely. There are false teachers among us. Christ talked about that more than ever. But if you understand something, you know, uh, if you want to, if you want to be elevated by God, you got to be very careful who you hang out with. Yes. Remember in the Leviticus, there are three areas where the realm of death and life will come to you. Amen. What, what, what is it? Places. Places. People. people and right. And clothing. Right. You got to be careful. All these three things. Everybody say Amen. Amen. All right. Now listen to me. Uh, we got to move on. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, as I close, Nassau. Write the word Nassau mean again. It also means to elevate, right? Yeah. So when we get the word Nasa, Nasa means to lift up, right? All right. Last but not least, write this down. My words, my words are seeds for my feelings. My words are seeds for my feelings. Now, now what do I mean? The only way you feel depressed, watch this now, if you have a lot of words that come out of your mouth, that will lend to depression. Come on. Amen. Or have allowed someone to link those words to you by words or speech that they have given you. Remember, you never, you never amount to nothing. You never be anything. You know, those are words that are, you are linked to you because you listen to it. And those, are, those have become soul tie, right? You talk about soul tie. But God has given you a mouth. Say, I have a mouth. I have a mind. To do what? To magnify. Say, to magnify the strength of God's word and increase my capabilities for God's glory. Right? You gave your mind, you gave your mouth. Use it correctly. Your words should always reflect godly desires. Amen. Amen. And we all make mistakes in our words. We all do. In other words, you can actually, watch this now, you can actually schedule failure. You, you know that you can actually scale, uh, schedule a failure by negative thoughts and words? You actually you put it on your schedule by just thinking about it. You make an appointment with them. That's what you do. Because your words should never Come on, talk about your past. Amen. Hello. Mm -hmm. Talking about your past is Greek mindset. Amen. And Hebrew is always what? Future. Forward. Going into your future. Never say, 
Well, listen to me. Never say, I can't wait looking at food. <laughs> Don't ever say that. You never lose weight. <laughs> right? Everybody say amen. amen. Yeah. All right. How many of you believe in your economy? Your economy. Forget about the world's economy. Your economy. Amen. God's economy. Amen. How many of you believe in God's economy? Amen. Okay. So, right, so I want you to say this with me before we take this offering tonight. <laughs> say, my economy, my economy is tied to my words. Tied to my words. My future, my future is tied, tied to Elohim, Elohim, my creator, my creator which, is my future. which is my future. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember, your, your economy is tied to him. Amen. Tied to his kingdom. Yes. His kingdom has never fallen. Amen. Will never crash. Amen. Come on, will never the, the stocks will never go down. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Will always go up. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's pray over this offering. God of Abraham, Isaac.